Welcome back to the Camilla Tomney Show. Now, as promised, I'm joined by James Schneider. He's the former comms chief for Jeremy Corbyn. And Justin Cohen, who's the news editor at the Jewish News. Lovely to see you both this morning. Let's start. Should there be a ceasefire, James? Yes, there absolutely has to be a ceasefire. And that's why the overwhelming majority of people on Earth, the overwhelming majority of people in the UK and the US all support it because it's plain common sense. You can see that you don't respond to the killings of some one group of children with the mass, mass killings of another group but of Israel's children. But Israel's got a right to defend itself against no a terror has, attack, hasn't <clears> it? You, of, Israel has an absolute right to defend itself. It does not have an absolute right to indiscriminately kill children, to engage is it in, indiscriminately war, killing to children, engage Justin? in war crimes. But the, the fact is that uh, if Israel was to, uh, stop, was to engage with the ceasefire at this point, it would be raising the white flag. It would be the international community accepting that Israel doesn't have a right to defend itself against the ultimate acts of barbarity. And it would be also um, an admission that this kind of terrorism could be exported elsewhere in the world. That's, that's what would happen if Israel was to raise a white flag at this point. I mean, isn't that a point? You know, what could happen if there's a ceasefire is Hamas could just regroup. They're terrorists. They're not really to be bargained or reasoned with. Do they then put down their weapons? What's to stop... If Hamas want humanitarian aid to come into Gaza and indeed for Palestinian people to be safer, why don't they hand back the hostages? Why don't they stop using people as human shields? The reason why you need to have a ceasefire is there is no military solution to the dispossession of the Palestinian people. This is not going to be resolved. What will happen if Gaza is entirely flattened? If every single person that's even crossed the street near someone uh, who's a Hamas operative has been killed? Well, if are Israel all, talking about please. flattening Hamas? No, 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 but it's not, I'm sorry, it's not flattening Hamas. If you have 8,000 civilians who have died, over 3,000 children, Whole neighbourhoods completely flattened. That's not flattening Hamas. But that is flattening the Palestinian people. Justin, that is flattening James, people. That's flattening children okay, who that, have hopes. That's who have point. Who Justin. have lives. Who deserve there, to be alive. There's a big difference between uh, what happened on the 7th of October and what's happening now. There, there seems to be. Yes, there is. Uh, one is of a tr hugely tremendous, larger scale than the other. There, one. there seems to be an absolute uh, insistence uh, from people like Jeremy Corbyn and other people. Um, to draw a parallel between the two things. On October the 7th was the culmination of a 10-month plan by Hamas terrorists to go into people's homes, to rape women, to behead children, to do the most unspeakable crimes. And, and Israel didn't want that. Hamas, uh, Israel is now responding to those acts to defend its citizens. It cannot have Hamas on the border and risk this happening again. No government could, have, could, could allow Israel that to be the case. Israel is defending its citizens. But how do you well, suggest well, it that it does no, defend its Israel citizens? Israel is not defending its citizens. But how the, should it do it if it doesn't yes, do it like I'll, this? I'll, I'll answer. The hostages are made no safer. In fact, they're put far more at risk, which is why some family members of some of the hostages went to see Prime Minister Netanyahu earlier this week asking to delay the ground uh, offensive because very clearly negotiation is the way to bring back the hostages. And for Israeli security, for the security of people in Israel, the only solution, the only long-term solution is to end the decades-long dispossession of the Palestinian people. Gaza, hold on, Gaza has been now for 17 years an open-air prison. There has, people have tried peaceful, and I do not support armed, hold on, wait, people have tried peaceful things. When, for example, March 2018, Tens of thousands of, pe of, of Palestinians in Gaza marched peacefully, unarmed, to the border to protest against their, them being in a prison camp. They were shot with snipers. Over two, hold on, over 200 well, unarmed in. protesters killed, are, over 6,000 You're describing people. Gaza as an open James, uh, James, prison. As David Cameron did. Justin? James, James, it depends how far back you want, to take, you want to take this, but let's go back to 2005, for example, mm -hmm. the disengagement from Gaza. Israel ripping its own citizens out of their homes forcibly. I remember covering the, the fallout from this on our front pages. It was extremely painful for a lot, of, uh, a lot of Israelis and a lot of Jews, but it did it in order to hand back a piece of land that it had been asked for a long time by the Palestinians and by the international community to hand back. It handed it back. And now look what's happened. We've had decades of rocket attacks from that strip. And now we've, we've had the launch, the most barbaric attacks that this world has seen for decades. Israel what, 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 what do you want to be done 
about Hamas on the border of Israel? That's, that's, that's Israel the question. Israel has continued to occupy Gaza since 2005 under international law. The reason why Israel can shut off food, fuel, water, electricity, internet, phone lines is because it has a total blockade by land, by air and by sea of Gaza. That How is, is why... Hamas firing rockets if it doesn't have any power? How, how do you mean? Well, Hamas clearly no, has been no stockpiling is... utilities, right? Uh, per in the tunnels. They so, perhaps they so have. What, but, but what's your explanation for Hamas why they is, aren't ha helping the people ha of Palestine? Ha Hamas is, Hamas they're is... the government of this area and they are not helping the people of Palestine because we understand that they're stockpiling fuel and supplies Hamas for, their own, for their own terror Hamas attacks. Is, uh, Israel has a, 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 an extremely advanced, extremely effective defence shield, the Iron Dome, against Hamas's rockets. Hamas's rockets it has fired thousands of rockets in, over the last two, two decades. And I think 34 Israelis have been killed by James, those rockets. James, now, come on. Again, you know better the, 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 than you know the, the, that. The threat from Hamas's rockets is, does, uh, does not legitimise the complete destruction of Gaza, which is taking place now, and the loss of thousands Justin. of children's the, lives. The intention of each and every one of those rockets is to kill civilians. Yes, Israel has indeed invested in the Iron Dome. Hamas has invested in, in tunnels for decades. Its leaders, ha ha having a lovely time in Doha at the moment, have billions of pounds. I... There, is, there, th there is no need for the Palestinian people, for the people of Gaza, to be in the situation they're in. The reason they're no, in no, that situation no is need. because of Hamas. There's, there, there, I mean, no, it isn't. The Shh. reason why the, the people of Gaza are in the situation they're in is because they have been dispossessed and denied by an occupying power for decades. That is the that is the reality. And now that power is killing children in a way which is utterly unjustifiable. Can we bring it domestic for a moment? Because obviously we saw the Palestinian uh, peace marches yesterday in the streets of London. Some say there weren't peaceful elements. Uh, some say that some were using language which appeared to support not only the October the 7th attack, but a degree of due hate on the streets of London. Can we have a discussion about whether it is appropriate for protesters to be saying from the river to the sea? It's entirely appropriate. But it, uh, hold on, please it, it let me answer. It means the elimination let, of no, Israel. No, it doesn't. Please let me answer. Uh, it's entirely appropriate. I'm very proud that we had half a million people on the streets of London yesterday calling for a ceasefire. That was what that protest was, uh, was about. And it's I'm, po probably the largest protest we've seen on the streets of London since those that opposed the Iraq war in 2003. The overwhelming majority of British people want to see a ceasefire and they're raising their voice because that is the morally justified position. Okay. And any attempts, and there have been many, many attempts to characterize these basic human progressive protests as being uh, anti-Jewish. They're not anti-Jewish. I went on one, I marched but with the Jewish But it is anti-Jewish when people start protesting outside the Sydney Opera House and saying, gas the Jews, gas the Jews. Well, it uh, is anti-Semitic when people start wearing pictures of paragliders on the back of their jackets. People, of course, shouldn't say gas the Jews. That's unbelievably offensive. But to suggest that half a million people calling for uh, dignity okay. and, and life for children let's are somehow what, being anti-Semitic. Let's see what Justin. It's a vile slur and is completely false. So Justin, let's, let's, from the river to the sea. So let, let's start uh, on, on an element of agreement. I, I would, I would almost certainly uh, imagine that every, not every protester on the streets of London yesterday was anti-Semitic or pro-Hamas. And I, every time I've heard suggestions that they are from members of uh, my own community, or from other people, I have, I have rebutted those with every sinew I have. But when you have people on the streets singing for jihad, singing for another intifada, and worse, calling, uh, uh, repeating uh, old chants, uh, recalling battles between Muslims and Jews in which Jews have been slaughtered. That is not, uh, that is, that is anti-Semitic. That is not helping the Palestinian cause. And that act action has to be taken by the police and the government and, and, and before next Saturday. Because that, that doesn't just, uh, that affects people on the streets the for British Jews. must support cracking down on some of these rogue elements, because as you say, they're giving peaceful marchers a really bad name. So my largest priority is to have the biggest possible expression 
of public support for a ceasefire because our government has a role in this conflict. We support Israel diplomatically. We give it weapons. That is the absolute priority. Of course, there are some fringe... So Keir Starmer needs to pivot to his position finally, Well, of James. course he does. But okay. of course there are always fringe elements in, in some things and there's some idiots who will be idiotic. But let's be clear, the, majority, the overwhelming majority of the British people want a ceasefire and they're right to do so. James Where, where did Schneider? those figures come from, James, actually? You got poll ten days ago. Well, that, that, that's, that's not a latest figure. And, and the well, let's see the latest figure. I'm well, sure it's high. The, the fact is that, that Keir Starmer is final point, Justin. Final point, quickly. Keir Starmer is absorbing a lot of pressure to do what he's doing. Um, can you imagine what would happen if your former boss had been in power now? Yes, what, it would the, be much better. No, it wouldn't. With See, no, it wouldn't. As a, of, of as a British, as a British, Hamas and Hezbollah aren't friends, though, are they, James? No, I wouldn't. Say no, they were, indeed. No. All right, Justin, James, thank you very much indeed for joining me this morning.